Today we're going to be talking about how to find area under the parametric curve, but above the x-axis. And in this particular problem, we've been given the parametric curve defined by the two equations x equals 1 plus e to the t and y equals t minus t squared. And we've been asked to find the area bounded by this parametric curve and the x-axis. So with these kinds of problems, the first thing we want to do is eliminate the parameter from our equations here for x and y. And what that means is remove the t variable and end up with an equation for y in terms of x. The way that we do that is by solving the x equation here for t. And then we go ahead and plug our value for t into our equation for y. So in order to solve x equals 1 plus e to the t for t, the first thing we'll do is subtract 1 from both sides to get e to the t on its own. When we do that, we'll get e to the t is equal to x minus 1. Now to solve this for t, we'll take the natural log of both sides and get natural log of e to the t equals natural log of x minus 1. On the left hand side here when we do that, we'll get natural log and e to cancel and we'll just be left with t equals natural log of x minus 1. Now that we've solved for t, we want to go ahead and plug our value, natural log of x minus 1, into our equation for y for t. So we'll get y equals, when we plug it in for this first t here, we'll get natural log of x minus 1. And then when we plug it in for t squared, we'll get minus the value natural log of x minus 1 squared. Now at this point, what we want to do is set this equation equal to zero. And the reason that we want to do that is because we're looking to find points of intersection between this curve for y in terms of x and the x-axis. The equation for the x-axis is y equals zero. So we plug zero in for y. Solving this equation for x will tell us where this curve crosses the x-axis and therefore where we have our points of intersection. And those points of intersection will be our limits of integration, a and b. So if we jump back up to this reminder section up here, what I've written is a formula that we'll use to find area under the curve. But we have to sort of do it in two parts. First, we need to find our limits of integration a and b, and we talked about how we were going to do that. We just eliminated the parameter, set our equation for y in terms of x equal to 0, and we're going to solve for x, and that'll give us limits of integration a and b. What we're then going to do is plug those limits of integration back into our equation for t so that we can get limits of integration alpha and beta, because this second integral here is really the one we want to use to find area under a parametric curve. So let's go ahead and walk through that. We'll solve this equation for zero. The way that we'll do it is by factoring out from the right hand side natural log of x minus 1. When we factor that out, we'll get 1 minus natural log of x minus 1 like this. And now that we have factors which are set equal to zero, we can solve each factor equal to zero separately. So we'll put them into two different equations. We'll get natural log of x minus 1 equals 0. That's our first factor. Or we'll get the other factor, 1 minus natural log of x minus 1 equals 0. Now to solve each of these for x, we'll take the first one first. We'll raise both sides to the base e. So we'll raise both sides to base e. And on the left hand side, we'll get e and natural log to cancel like this. So we'll be left with x minus 1 equals e to the 0 is just 1. So we get 1 over here. To solve for x, we'll add 1 to both sides, and we'll get x equals 2. Now if we solve the other equation, we'll add natural log of x minus 1 to both sides to get 1 equals natural log of x minus 1. Again, we'll raise both sides to the base e like this, and we'll get e and natural log to cancel on the right-hand side. e to the 1 we'll just leave as e. And then on the right-hand side, we have x minus 1. When we solve for x, we'll add 1 to both sides, and we'll get x equals e plus 1. Now these are going to be our limits of integration a and b. To figure out which one is a and which one is b, we would need to evaluate this e plus 1. Well, you should know that e to the first power is roughly 2.7. So if we add 1 to that, we'll get 3.7. Because this value is greater than the other one here, this is going to be our limit of integration b, our upper limit of integration. And this will be a, because it's from 2 to approximately 3.7. So this one has to be a, and this one has to be b. 
Now these are limits of integration a and b, but as we talked about before, we want alpha and beta. In order to get alpha and beta, we'll plug both of these into our equation for t that we have here. When we do that for x equals 2, you can see that we'll get t equals natural log of 2 minus 1. If we simplify that, we get t equals natural log of 1. Natural log of 1 is just 0, so we get t equals 0, and this is going to be our limit of integration alpha, our lower limit of integration. Over here, if we plug in e plus 1, we'll get t equals natural log of e plus 1 minus 1. And when we simplify this, we'll get t equals natural log. Our plus 1 and minus 1 will cancel, and we'll just get natural log of e. Natural log of e is 1, so we'll get t equals 1, and that'll be equal to beta. So we'll have our limits of integration alpha equals 0 and beta equals 1. We'll erase the board and then talk about how to set up this integral here. So we're going to be using the integral g of t times f prime of t with limits of integration alpha and beta. We already know alpha and beta, but we don't have a value for g of t or f prime of t yet. Well, f of t is actually just equal to x, so x equals f of t, and g of t is equal to y, g of t. So you notice we have g of t just as it is, we can plug in that value for y, but for f prime of t, we'll need to take the derivative of our equation here for f of t. So f prime of t, if we take the derivative of 1 plus e to the t, term by term, the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of e to the t is e to the t, so what we get here is just e to the t. Now we have everything we need to plug into our integral, so we'll have the integral from alpha to beta, so in our case 0 to 1, of g of t times f prime of t. Well, we plug in g of t and we get t minus t squared. We plug in f prime of t and we get e of t, which is the value we just found here, and then we have dt. Now it's just a matter of evaluating this integral, and the way that you evaluate the integral will depend on the particular function that you're left with here. In our case, we're going to need to use integration by parts to evaluate this integral. What we want to do is distribute the e of t across the t minus t squared, so we'll get integral from 0 to 1 of t e to the t minus t squared e to the t dt. And we'll actually go ahead and separate these into two integrals. We'll get the integral from 0 to 1 of t e to the t dt minus the integral from 0 to 1 of t squared e to the t dt. And at this point we need to use integration by parts for both of these. So if you're not super comfortable with integration by parts, I've got tons of videos about the method, but for now we'll address this first integral. We'll set u equal to t and we'll set dv equal to e to the t dt. We'll take the derivative of u and get du equals just 1 times dt, so we'll end up with just dt here. We'll take the integral of dv and get v equals e to the t. Now we can plug these values into our integration by parts formula. So remember that these four pieces here relate specifically to this integral right here, and we'll go ahead and plug into our integration by parts formula the right hand side for this integral only for now. So we'll do u times v, in our case that's t times e to the t, so we'll get t e to the t, and we're going to be evaluating that on 0 to 1, and then we'll subtract the integral according to our integration by parts formula, the integral from 0 to 1 of v times du. So v times du will give us e to the t times dt, and that's going to replace our first integral there. Now what we want to do is use integration by parts for our second integral, this t squared e to the t. Up here we'll get minus because we have this minus sign. Now we need u, du, v, and dv for this second integral here. So in this case we'll set u equal to t squared and dv equal to e to the t dt. We'll take the derivative of u to get du equals 2t and then multiply that by dt. We'll take the integral of dv to get v equals e to the t, and now we'll treat these four components as affecting 
this integral here and we'll use these components and plug them into the right hand side of our integration by parts formula here. So what we're going to end up with now is again u times v, so in this case that's t squared times e to the t, so t squared e to the t minus the integral of v du. Oh, and we have to evaluate here on the interval 0 to 1. So then our integral will also be 0 to 1 the integral of v du, so that's e to the t times 2t dt, so what we'll get here is 2t e to the t dt, and that'll be our second integral there. So now if we work through each of these, we'll get t e to the t, and then the integral of e to the t is simply e to the t, so we'll get minus e to the t, and we'll say that we're evaluating this whole thing on 0 to 1, because evaluating this piece on the interval 0 to 1, and then the integral here on 0 to 1 is the same as evaluating the entire thing on 0 to 1, so we can bring those limits of integration out here on the right hand side. So that's the first piece, then here with the second half, We'll simplify and say that we have t squared e to the t on the interval 0 to 1. Then because we have a negative sign and a negative sign, that'll become a positive sign there. So plus 2, we'll pull the 2 out in front, times the integral from 0 to 1 of t e to the t dt. Now at this point, notice that we have one integral left and we would need integration by parts to solve it. But the cool thing is that we already have the integration by parts formula for t e to the t. We dealt with it over here. So what we're going to do is use the exact same integration by parts formula. We know that it ends up as this value over here. So we're going to substitute that value for this entire integral. And what we'll be left with here is if we take the first part, we'll get t e to the t minus e to the t. And we're evaluating that on the interval 0 to 1. Then we'll get here minus, and now we have t squared e to the t on the interval 0 to 1, plus 2, and now this is where we plug in this value in green again because we already evaluated it earlier, so we'll get 2 times t e to the t minus e to the t, and we'll be evaluating that again on the interval 0 to 1. So now all of our integrals are gone and we just need to simplify as much as we can here. We're going to take out all of the limits of integration 0 and 1 and move them to the end because notice we're evaluating everything on 0 to 1. So we'll just be left with t e to the t minus e to the t minus t squared e to the t plus 2t e to the t minus 2 e to the t, and we'll be evaluating that entire thing on 0 to 1. Simplifying the inside here, notice that we have 1 t e to the t plus 2 t e to the t. That's going to leave us with 3 t e to the t. That'll take care of these two. Then we have minus 1 e to the t minus 2 e to the t will give us minus 3 e to the t. That takes care of those two. And then we just have minus t squared e to the t like this on 0 to 1. Now if we evaluate on these limits of integration, we plug in the upper limit first 1. When we do that, we'll plug it in for t, and we'll get 3 times 1 here is 3 times e to the 1. So we end up with just 3e. Minus 3 times e to the 1 is minus 3e. Minus 1 squared times e to the 1 is simply minus e and then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in 0. So plugging in 0, we'll get 0 here, minus 3 e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, so we have minus 3 times 1, so we just have a negative 3. And then we'll get 0 here for this term as well. When we simplify this, we'll see that our 3 e minus 3 e cancels, and what we're left with is negative e plus 3, and if we can avoid it, we never want to lead with a negative sign, so what we'll say is that for our final answer, area is equal to positive 3 here minus e. And that's it. This is the area under this parametric curve, but above the x-axis. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below, and subscribe to be notified of future videos.